what life inside the starship will be like. The SpaceX Starship is arguably one of the most anticipated engineering projects of our time, and unarguably the most promising project in the field of space travel since the dawn of the space age. The futuristic spaceship is just another ambitious brainchild of Elon Musk, one of the foremost innovators of our time. Currently still in development by SpaceX, it has the potential to revolutionize the world of space travel and beyond. While the Starship's potential uses are numerous, from disrupting telecommunications to revolutionizing interplanetary travel, Elon Musk has stated that his plans for the spacecraft in the long term is to make humans go to Mars and colonize the Red Planet. While we wait for him to achieve this huge goal, you've probably wondered what a trip on Mars on the spacecraft would even be like. Based off SpaceX's own projections and what we know about space travel, here's what we're expecting. Facilities The SpaceX Starship isn't just massive in terms of its potential. With a liftoff mass of 5,000 metric tons and 120 meters in height, the two-stage rocket is the largest to ever be flown. The stainless steel behemoth is also one of the most powerful capable of carrying 150 tons of reusable fuel. The first stage, the Super Heavy stands at 70 meters and is powered by 33 engines. Its second stage, built for the crew and cargo, also named Starship stands 50 meters tall and is powered by six engines. Just imagine that. Designed to be fully reusable and capable of carrying human beings on long-term interplanetary trips, the Starship is set to make space travel look as mundane as a flight from France to the UK. Scratch that, it is set to make a trip from the US to Australia seem as mundane as interstate travel. According to SpaceX, the Starship is supposed to be designed for carrying up to 100 people. Our speculation here is the projection could only be feasible for Earth-to-Earth -Earth trips. The number of resources that would be required to sustain 100 humans on a long-term space flight would simply demand a higher storage capacity that is currently possible for viable spacecraft. Let's wait and see though. Most experts say it would be more realistic to have a 10-person capacity. According to Elon Musk's projections, a one-way trip to Mars in a starship should take about six months, all things being equal. So. What we'll be needing is a spacecraft with enough facilities to house about 10 human beings for six months. Going with the standard for long distance manned spacecraft, we're assuming that the upper stage of the Starship, the Starship will be split into seven sections. The top level being their flight deck, the second level being a general assembly point and social section, the third for personal crew pods, the fourth for bathrooms, toilets, and a gym, the fifth for cargo bay and supplies like for food, and the sixth for utilities like power and air, as well as the storage for rovers and probes for the exploration of the surface to Mars. The seventh floor will house a lift system that will be essential for moving between sections due to the Starship's immense size. Each level of the Starship will be dimensioned differently, of course, according to its requirements. The social section will probably be the largest and most spacious level. Our guess is that it will have relatively about 3 meters and the full 90 meter breadth of the spacecraft for passengers to comfortably unwind without bumping into each other or the walls. The cargo bay will be next, seeing as the supplies for the successful trip to Mars will be taking up a whole lot of space. Think about the amount of food and water the average person consumes in 6 months. Multiply by 10 and you should get the picture. If a hydroponic garden for growing food on this spacecraft is fitted to this level though, though as some have suggested, we're going to be looking at a cargo bay twice this size. The smallest section will be the flight deck of course, as it's only meant for pilots and the trip will be mostly autonomous anyways. All the other levels will be in terms of size. Regarding the utility aspect of the trip, Figuring out the means of power supply is going to be a huge challenge as powering a manned craft of that size for a trip that long is going to require a massive amount of electricity. Looking at the power generation systems for conventional spacecraft, 
could give us insights as to how SpaceX will most likely tackle this. Our best guess is that the Starship will utilize a combination of a variety of methods to meet its demands. The first half of the trip will most likely be powered by solar panels as the Starship would still be within proximity of the Sun at that time. An array of batteries, fuel cells, or a combination of both would then be deployed towards the second half of the trip, keeping the lights on and the air circulating till the spaceship lands on the Red Planet. While being the most feasible way to power the ship in theory, this poses the risk of constituting enough dead weight that it never leaves the ground. If anyone is capable of figuring it out though, it's the SpaceX engineers. Food SpaceX works in partnership with NASA, so the food of the Starship's passengers, the first one at least, will most likely be prepared and packaged at the Space Food Systems Laboratory. Just like NASA's astronauts do before every mission, the passengers themselves will get to select their meals they would like for their trip. The lab will then get to work creating these meals and drawing up a strict diet for the passengers. Keep in mind though, that microgravity changes the taste of food as you're making those choices though. Long trips like the one to Mars require space foods with long shelf life, meaning it should still be safe to eat after several months or even years at room temperature. The most common preservation method for space food is freeze drying. It's a complicated process, but the TLDR is that it stops bacteria in the food from multiplying and spoiling the food, basically leaving it frozen in time. Another plus is that it drastically reduces the weight of the food item, reducing the payload for launch and making it easier to store. It also preserves most of the food's nutrients and leaves it still easy to hydrate. Alternate methods of food preservation is thermostabilizing, in which the food is subjected to high amounts of heat, pressure, and irradiation, where the food and packaging is exposed to ionizing radiation. Space food normally comes in an airtight plastic packaging or cans. The meal always comes attached to the table or tray to prevent it from floating away. Unlike Earth, scissors are a necessity in space to open the plastic packaging the food is stored in. Beverages, soups, or any other type of liquid on the spacecraft will most likely be packaged into a custom-made pouch to be sipped through a specifically designed straw. Don't expect anything too fancy. Hygiene. Hygiene is extremely important in space. A single infection can delay repairs and endanger the lives of the crew on board. Each crew member is going to have a personal hygiene kit for cleanliness and grooming as a matter of necessity. The contents are typically a toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, shaving supplies, a sleep mask, and etc. You get the idea. Showering is now possible in space thanks to NASA, developing special shower units for the International Space Station. This provides the importance of comfort for passenger hygiene. Brushing your teeth is a very messy task carried out in space. To avoid excess waste floating around in the cabin and maintain a clean living space, SpaceX will most likely solve this with NASA Dent an ingestible foamless toothpaste made for space and a major breakthrough for dental hygiene. For when the crew needs to go, special zero-gravity toilets have been designed for the craft. Crew members have to be strapped by their feet and thighs to the floor to ensure they remain seated on the toilet. The toilet will probably operate on a vacuum, so it must be tightly sealed when not used. Personal hygiene in space is way more complex than on Earth. It also happens to be way more necessary too. Exercise and fitness. Space does weird things to the human body. This would still hold true for the planet of Mars. Transitioning from one gravity field to another is a difficult thing for the body to adjust to. Compounding this hurdle even more, Starship's crew would be working with just a third of the planet's gravity on Mars. Landing a spacecraft on a planet like Mars could be tricky because the crew is likely to experience post-flight orthostatic intolerance where they are unable to maintain their blood pressure standing up, which can lead to fainting. That would be disastrous in space. According to NASA's research, 
weight-bearing bones loses about 1% to 1.5% of mineral density per month during spaceflight. This mineral loss is usually irreversible and cannot be corrected by rehabilitation. Fluids in the body flow upwards to the head in microgravity, which can cause vision problems. Scary stuff. Without a proper diet and exercise routine, the effects of microgravity will also significantly accelerate the loss of muscle mass. SpaceX will probably follow NASA's lead in counteracting these effects. First, by closely monitoring the health markers of each passenger on the Starship, so treatment can be swift at any sign of illness. All crew members will wear compression cuffs on their thighs and a lower body pressure device to keep blood in the lower extremities and draw fluid from their head back to the legs. All crew members will also be required to engage in at least 2.5 hours of daily exercise to combat loss of muscle mass and maintain cardiovascular health. The gym will probably be fitted with workout equipment for space cardio like a stationary bike and a strap-down treadmill. To properly combat the loss of muscle mass, custom resistance machines for weightlifting will also be necessary. Communication As the Starship gets closer to Mars, the lag in communication between the craft and the Earth will increase substantially. It would be best to forget about having two-way conversations with Earth while on the Starship. You could just as well be using smoke signals being that far out in space. The comforts of chatting and instant messaging will be nothing but a distant dream until you make the return trip to Earth. You can probably imagine how lonely that could be. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, share, and please subscribe. What did you learn about space travel? What do you think we missed? Tell us in the comments down below.